Good morning, everybody, and greetings from the Royal College of Nursing's 400,000 members in the UK. <clears throat> Nurse migration was at its peak in 2001, and overseas trained recruits exceeded the number of newly trained British recruits on the UK nurse register for the first time. So by 2001, approximately 47% of all nurses in London were migrant workers. And 13% of the UK nursing population as a whole were not born in the UK. The experience of internationally recruited nurses, IRNs for, for short, in the UK has not been great. And I want to talk about the negative, this negative, associated with shortage. The RCN began to get reports that many IRNs were experiencing racism and discrimination in the workplace, and we commissioned some research to find out more about their experiences. Our report, We Need Respect, highlighted a number of problems in how nurses were recruited to work in the UK. Employers didn't think clearly about what they wanted in terms of skills before recruiting from nurses from overseas. So, for example, there were a number of inappropriate appointments, a theatre specialist being recruited to work, in a care home for the elderly, and this was not unusual. Another major failing was that employers did not adequately prepare the existing workforce. So we had many problems due to a lack of understanding of new colleagues' qualifications and assumptions that they were not as qualified as the UK nursing workforce. At best, this led to inaction and IRNs being isolated. At worst, it led to racist harassment. There was little advice for the IRNs about what they should expect when they arrived in the country and little support to help them understand cultural norms and colloquial habits. Many recruitment agencies had overstated the value of their potential salaries in relation to the cost of living in the UK and many IRNs found they couldn't afford good accommodation or achieve a reasonable standard of living once they arrived. Some were not adequately prepared for the weather. Uh, and many nurses were recruited to work in rural areas, but without thinking how they'd access their communities, their faith groups, and support networks. And then there were wider political issues at play, really nasty ones, uh, to do with the fears about the impact mass immigration would have on UK student nurses and whether they'd be able to get jobs once they graduated. There was also the question of ethical recruitment from developing countries. The UK had good links to access overseas nurses from our former colonies, uh, but didn't always consider their ethical responsibility. Uh, for example, there was one specific example when we recruited the only intensive care nurse specialist from a Caribbean island. From the findings of We Need Respect, the RCN subsequently developed guidance for employers to help them in recruiting and retaining nurses from overseas. And from this work, we've been able to agree an ethical code for recruitment overseas with the NHS, and also at European level with our partners in social dialogue. This is now in force in the hospital sector across the European Union.